Until Dawn has an ESRB rating of M for Mature for blood and gore, intense violence, sexual themes, and strong language. Who are we speaking to? Hannah? Is that you? Oh, God. This is messed up. Josh, are you? I'm fine. Are you sure? Because we can stop. No. Dude, it's cool. I want to hear what it says. I don't know where to start. Think about it. If this is actually Hannah, I mean, we can find out what happened that night. Josh? I can handle it. Okay. Um... Let me think. Okay. Who killed you? Hannah, who was it? L? I? B? The library. Maybe there's something in the library e here? R? O? O? Proof. There, there's, there's proof. In the library? Oh, no! oh! <sighs> Holy shit. I never even heard of Until Dawn until just recently, and this is one of those rare titles where it just kind of sneaks up on you and it's a joy. I saw one trailer and I was interested immediately. What grabbed me were the graphics, and holy shit do the graphics look great, but the atmosphere that you explore is not only eerie, but beautiful. Until Dawn is a modernized point and click game where you instead of using a cursor to navigate your character, you actually have full control of them. Although the controls sometimes feel awkward, you manage to move around pretty good. The cameras sometimes follow you but for the most part remain static to one location and it follows you around as you move. It adds to that feeling that someone out there is watching you the entire time. You can tell this game gets a lot of influences from a lot of horror classics and it was so cool when you pick up on some of the nods to celebrate those scary moments. The story is about these 820 something people who get together for some celebrations and unfortunately are traumatized by a singular event that happened a year ago. There's an update on Hannah and Beth Washington, the twins who are still missing. One year ago tonight, the Washington girls left the safety of their parents' lodge and headed out into a snowstorm. Foul play. Not officially, no. There is one individual we're considering as a person of interest, but his whereabouts are currently unknown. Isn't that from like the Book of Dummies from Don't Get Your Ass Killed 101, rule number 27? Don't return to the place of the murder a year later because you're asking to get your ass murdered. The story makes me think of something like if Kevin Williamson, the writer of such classics like Scream, I Know What You Did Last Summer, and Teaching Mrs. Tingle, hooked up with Joss Whedon, who you should know because he did Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Cabin in the Woods, and most recently the Avengers movies, and they had a baby. Boom! Until dawn. Hello, and thank you all for joining me. Tonight, we're going to conduct a little experiment, sort of test. Now for this experiment, we'll need the cooperation of our two test subjects, Joshua and Ashley. But we're going to need one more brave participant to help decide which subject will live and which will die. Oh, no. oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh, Chris! Get us out of here! Look please, up from here, you please, her. please, everyone calm down. It's all very simple. Christopher, you will find a lever placed directly in front of you. All you have to do is choose who you will save. Anyway, aside from the cliche and I think it's a deliberate story arc, the experience is real. It's very entertaining. The characters voiced by real actors do an amazing job portraying their personalities. Yes, there are stereotypes, but you care about them. That's what I mean. When you realize that they have emotional exteriors, but it's their protective armor to hide who they really are. Each character, when introduced, have unique traits and personal emotional strengths and weaknesses that appear on screen when you first meet them. As you make choices in the game and behave in certain ways, these attributes change and so does your relationship with others, causing for different paths to form. 
Not everything in the game is set in stone, and your choices aren't funneled to a single conclusion. Like so many other games of the same genre, the game calls this the butterfly effect. Now there are these totem pole figures that you'll come across during your gameplay. Inside these figures are five different kind of butterflies that reveal visions into possibilities of the future that range from fortune to death. There are tones in the game when you make decisions that sound out if you are continuing on a path that may lead to a bad place. And it's up to you to try to think about your next steps because if you don't change your attitude by making choices in the game, it could lead to someone dying. But if you do make changes, the game releases a flora of butterflies letting you know that you just avoided something traumatic. Uh -huh. You'll get to control all of the characters as you progress through the game, making choices of survival and for a personal gain. It's a third person view and you'll get to do a lot of walking through dark corridors, scary forests, hospitals and mines. They are all connected through paths already laid out. It's very linear, so you don't get lost. Since everything is scripted, you just have to play out the scenarios with your best decision making. Also, once you leave an area, you cannot go back there unless the story takes you back there. Also, since this game is a full-on cinematic role-playing game, it is littered with quick-time events that also can change your past if you happen to miss a button press. There are also these moments where you have to be absolutely still in real intense moments, and trust me when I tell you, Holy shit, are those moments scary. Fear, pussy, pussy. Believe it or not, this game has collectibles as well for multiple playthroughs, and I think you are going to want to play again just to see what the other possibilities are. Mostly, it is in-game stuff like clues and background information about the mountain and its history. Out in the menu, however, you can find behind-the-scenes stuff and interviews with the cast, which I thought was fucking awesome. You can also replay the chapters once you are done to change the ending. And holy shit, that ending was so fucking intense. I can't ruin it for you guys, but if you want to see my full playthrough, make sure to subscribe. Until Dawn feels like it could have been one of those bi-monthly chapter releases like the Telltale series do. In fact, there are moments in between chapters where a clip plays previously on Until Dawn, just like a TV show. However, with its incredible, beautiful looking scenery and amazing cast, editing, soundtrack, directing, just a full-on experience, I feel like this game takes it up a notch. This game knows what it is, a point and click game and it makes the best use of a story, atmosphere, tension, haunting locales and entertaining jump scares. There were moments where I actually jumped. It wasn't just like watching a movie, it was like being involved in it. The experience is real. This may not be for some of those who love fast paced shoot em ups, but if you are looking for an amazing thrill ride full of suspense, gore and chills, check this title out. You guys are really going to like this one. It's a real surprise and I think it's one of those sleeper hits that many people are just finding out about. It's well worth the price of $59.99. And for the first time I'm actually going to give a gold coin for the unique experience that the game gave me. And I mean it, this game is really freaking cool. For more reviews and rants, subscribe to my channel. My name is Rox and I'll see you guys next time.